Hello, Mr. Vakas. How are you doing today? Good. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm also doing fine, man. Could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. My name is Vakas. I'm with Anand from Pakistan. It's been around four to five years since I joined this trading journey. All right. So I have I've heard about Pakistan a lot, and it's just famous for its delicious cuisine. And I really hope to visit it one day very soon. Sure. Sure. Welcome. You're more than welcome. All right. So uh, before we move into uh, your overall trading part. So why don't you just uh, share your trading journey with us? How it started and how is it going so far? Okay, so it was back in 2018. Uh, I just had a random message, promotional message, where mm-hmm. it was written a Bitcoin term, Bitcoin specific mm-hmm. term, Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I didn't know back then there was a something like Bitcoin. So uh, that was a time when I learned about the Bitcoin. I just done some researches about the Bitcoin. That uh, that was the time when the Bitcoin was moving around for thirteen to fourteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars back in. So it was my first time. Uh, I just uh, deposited one hundred dollars. It was the exchange hit BTC, mm-hmm. and that was the first time I lost all the money because I didn't know about any technical analysis, fundamental analysis. Yeah. So I kept on depositing money until and unless keep on losing the money. So it was uh, so back in two. 2019 since mm-hmm. i uh, learned about the forex market that was a th- that was a time when i shifted from crypto to forex because back in 2018 to 19 to till 20 before the covid mm-hmm. uh, it was financial shares was only trading on a spot market there exactly. was no future in trading okay so you have to wait for the four to five days or a week for it to earn a specific profit so uh so that was that was the time i just needed money to mm-hmm. just meet my expenses as well and that was uh, that is the reason why i just shifted to the forex market and that's where i just traded on 0.01 lot mm-hmm. and i made around 1 to 2 dollar and then i realized i can withdraw that dollar so it was really a turning point for me from that all right so uh, so you started forex trading in 2019 am i right yeah back in 18 crypto and but in 19 yeah so uh, What was the experience of, after getting that first first profitable trade? How did you feel? Uh, you know, you know the term about the euphoria. You know, yeah. There's a term about euphoria. You get over excited. You get confident. Like I can do everything as possible. Yeah. So I made with uh, within a week one ninety three dollars by just <laughs> taking a zero point zero three zero point zero five lot size. Yeah. Okay. And I was able to withdraw that money. and i was really excited that i can do everything i just don't need to follow someone else i can do analysis on my own and this and that but at, at some point you don't know that your psychology is something more important than yourself your trading your trading strategies exactly that was the time i just i just realized that it's not going to work because i'm just totally messing myself up so i <clears> had <throat> lo- losing streaks after that and until then i started learning from my mentor he is living in spain that's mm-hmm. where he started teaching me about but about the technicals how do you need, need to read the technical analysis how you mm-hmm. need to need the patterns indicator tools that's a, that's when i started learning about the trading all right so i suppose we can assume that you motivated yourself to become a successful trader when you yeah. started when you started seeing all the profits all right so in this journey from 2017 to 2022 it is so what was the hardest obstacle you had to face to become a successful trader uh you know trading journey is still difficult it's still struggling you can't say that you are a consistent profitable trader because just because of so many certain factors about the fundamentals you do know that you can rush your war you do exactly. not about the covid because if i am an analyst Mm-hmm. I can't predict market like I can't predict gold will go about three thousand dollar within a one year because you don't know that what will happen during that specific time period. Exactly. Yeah. So you can only predict. You will only trade on the probability basis. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that is the reason why I just joined with this uh, stuff and just I'm trying to take this. <clears throat> so the hardest obstacle for you has been determining the actual movement. Either it's gonna buy or uh, either it's gonna go up or go go down. But uh, what has, what are the things you have improved to to let's say uh, increase this accuracy rate? Uh, my analysis, uh, I just work on my analysis, and it's pretty amazing. I do know that because my mentor has told me, I just uh, I'm publishing my analysis, people following my analysis. I do know that is still uh, working enough. It's hundred percent accurate, but. You do not that we are human. Okay, we are yeah. not robots. So we are 
played with played by our emotions our psychology exactly okay at some point at some point because of some external factors you can't remain emotionally physically mentally stable mm-hmm. okay so you you got to have to deal with all these and i'm still dealing with all these dealing with my psychology my emotions and you know that when you fully occurs you get over excited you get over confident because of the few uh, recently since last two to three months you see that cpi report and fp news it causes a huge volatility in the market okay exactly. sometimes you end up in the favor of the market sometimes you, <laughs> you just get caught uh, you just become the victim of the market okay so i just uh, realized that trading is not something uh, difficult but i just know that i will be able to make enough profit if if i control my psychology if i control my emotion which is i know that it's not easily uh, controllable within four, four to five years it's a lifetime journey exactly so talking about journey how did your journey with prof firms began what was it what what's, what was the story uh, i was uh, trading back in 2019 and it was around october september back in time uh, i didn't have uh funds to trade with and then i had uh, an ad popping about that tmo challenge mm-hmm. so that's where i learn about their their the prop fund which offers virtual funds to start trading mm-hmm. so then i realized that i have to pay 150 dollars to earn 10000 dollars and i would just have to follow my rules and regulation this and that and pretty simple that's when where i just started with them and uh, to be very honest i just uh, lost that account within a month so so because of the rules and regulation i couldn't properly follow because yeah. i was uh, addicted to i was uh, addicted to my own trading style so i couldn't follow that properly and during that time since now so i didn't done any profit and in 2022 i just uh, started learning about the problem because i just wanted to i just wanted to clear myself from all things i just wanted to learn all the analysis tactic and analysis i just wanted mm-hmm. to my, make myself strong enough to just join it so back so in is about 4 to 5 months since i just started researching about the problem that's where i just found it uh, found about you guys fund index you were just launching you were going to launch about in uh, march i guess mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah march 18 yeah Yes, it was in March 18. That's when I learned about all of the prop firms. I just made so many notes about them. Just done the comparison. What about the withdrawal? What about the deposit? Everything about them. So that's where I just found about you guys. You were launching, and I just saw on your website there was a good scale West Indies cricketer. I just thought, okay, that's that's something different. But something there was so many something unique which caught up my attention. That was about the 15% time of profit. man that was my turning point i just thought okay why not why not just go over think of it so basically the the 15% profit share part motivated you to join fund and next yeah yeah basically. what are the other things that attracted you other things about the your customer support okay mm-hmm. you guys are really amazing i got my own account manager dedicated account manager and he is really supportive he is really friendly so uh, i have you guys know that and there's a mff other prop one which really uh, really don't uh, don't reply you really don't uh, support you guys properly but there is something different about you and uh, other guys because i didn't uh, started then back then mm-hmm. as soon as i started with you guys i passed my phase 1 phase 2 and moved to the real account mm-hmm. and after two weeks after bi weekly profit share i just received my profit share instantly and i was really amazed i was really, really amazed about you guys that you didn't delay or not said anything about that you whether you have to wait for one week or two weeks for the profit day. that was something that really, really amazed when we basically initiated this 15% profit share feature for our prop firm the the main purpose was to appreciate our traders from the very assessment phase because as you know it requires a lot, lot of hard work to to pass those phases those evaluation phases because once you pass those evaluation phases it's a uh, pretty easy journey because you have got no stress to pass and everything so we actually wanted to motivate our traders and appreciate them and that's how this entire 15% profit share thing began and so far i think it's working great for everyone yeah exactly that's right all right so why don't you just uh, tell us a bit about your trading strategy how do you trade based on uh, based on what circumstances okay i have learned uh, more enough about the trading Uh, mm-hmm. I have done all the strategies. I have learned all the tools and indicators. Mm-hmm. But right now, I'm stuck with my own trading style, which is pretty simple. There is no fancy thing about it. It's simple market structure and price structure. Mm-hmm. 
okay i just don't follow any indicator any tool okay i just simply follow price section and market structure it's simply refinement and there's nothing else all right can you share your screen with us if it's okay yeah sure okay sure right can you see the chart yeah yeah okay uh, this is the pair uh, this is D dxy whenever i start trading whenever i do uh, analysis i always do the analysis of dxy mm -hmm. because you don't know the market moves with the direction how how dxy moves how dollar index moves okay exactly. you just need to figure out uh, how dxy moving and just you have to do the opposite with all other pairs okay if dxy is getting stronger then you should know that gold gbp on all, all the currency pairs will be dipping will be catching yeah. up okay so this is my analysis which i have done on weekend and it was uh, analysis on the weekly and monthly daily time frame just to analyze analyze how this pair is moving okay so it was uh, you can see that it's simply a price section there is nothing nothing fancy there is nothing complicated it's simply a price section okay so i just uh, analyzed and also wrote everything about fundamental view and technical view okay mm -hmm. so that every person can understand it uh, from every aspect okay because fundamentals are, are like 80 percent of the techniques okay if you are a, if you are, if you are technically strong uh, you, then still you need to follow the fundamentals if you, there are the reports about uh gold uh gold in russia you you do know that uk and russia okay uk and russia war okay gold had moved from 1900 to 2057 2070 dollars exactly okay? so if every fundamentalist knew that the Russia and Ukraine war will trigger gold because back in 2020 I still remember that there was a war between US and China that was the time when the gold broke all time high it exactly. went about 2070 dollars okay if you were if you were a technical analyst then you would knew that the gold gold would have only gone about the 1930 dollar which was all time high but if you are a fundamental analyst, then you should have known that you should have known that the gold will break because of the wars, because of geopolitical geopolitical effects. So that's that's the reason why I always tend to look at the technical side as well as the fundamental side. So here it is a graph of the a graph of the DXY. Mm -hmm. I'm just sharing this graph basically just to for that because you have to uh, learn about the dxy movement okay here it is the graph is you can see that the bullish channel mm -hmm. price is trapped in a bullish channel as well as in a bearish channel okay <clears throat> price has reached up to 109 point okay 109 point after 20 years yeah it's been about 20 years since the price price reached about the 109 point okay so this was the most critical critical point okay this was the most critical point either if if this point breaks because you have heard about the rumors about the 100 bps rates hike rate hikes okay we have we have heard about the 75 rate hikes which trigger the market volatility which triggered so much volatility in the market but right now look at this it has exactly followed these levels which have i have drawn it has followed this this and this since monday you have seen that the market is moving in a single direction because our market is just recovering and dxy is simply reversing this dxy is simply following from this from this specific point okay but yeah so if if that point was broken if that point was broken from above and retested then we would surely have seen so many so many so many crashes in gold gold would have gone around 1600 to 1500 dollars pound you have seen about you have seen about the euro what happened to euro euro yeah. was become equivalent to equivalent to one dollar so but well you can see that the gold the dxy didn't break that specific point so I'm good that so I'm uh, since Monday I've been trading all of the players I've been trading like <clears throat> I've been uh, trading pound I'm sharing about the pound analysis okay mm -hmm. that's let me show you how my trading will okay yeah. okay here you can see that price is simply trapped mm -hmm. inside this wedge okay and I have drawn another another wedge right here i simply believe on the retest uh retest and breakout and retest of scenario okay price has broken this wedge 
and it has it tested and it has moved up i was just waiting for the price for the confirmation i've said i've seen that there is an, another trend line there is strong resistance at right here and then i got my entry at right right here and that's that's the point where i just uh, uh, earn about one ratio to one ratio 0.7.5 risk to reward ratio from that point amazing okay, it was pretty simple i was just waiting for the price to move from this specific area i didn't know that it will eventually fall from this to this one so you never know you never know where the price will go you just have to be satisfied with what have you have earned okay exactly. you just don't need to regret you just don't need to regret about if you uh, if you have missed any trade okay you will find multiple opportunities in your in your future okay just don't need to worry about that because your mentality your psychology really matters okay if you are mentally not stable then you might of mind uh, you might end up losing all the trades okay so if you have lost this trade no problem you just have to wait your uh, you just have to wait patiently to find another entry okay so now right now it was just moving right here i could have i was just waiting for the price to move because this was a point of gbp usc was it's been like uh, moved down to that critical point mm -hmm. i could not find a proper entry i was just waiting for the dxy movement i was waiting for the this point like i was just waiting for that whether it's yeah. gonna break that up or break gonna break that hold that zone so that was the time when it uh, hold that zone so i just it was a weekend as well so i was waiting for that so since you can see that it's right here since right here price mm -hmm. has broken my zone and i was waiting for that price broke my rejection and it has retested hold that zone i just trade enter enter and just earn about i'm still waiting for the profit to end but i have closed my partial because i just tend to uh, secure my trades okay i just know that when you have to scale the trades because i've seen so many people who just hold 100 pips in profit but still don't close it okay exactly. and what happened next the market reverses and it closes in the loss okay so just have to figure out when you have to, you is is more important because if you know the entry point you have to know when you have to exit the point okay when you have to exit the trade so this was the point when i just there was a point I just broke, uh, bring my stop loss as a break even, and the market was moving in my direction. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any issue. Okay, but I was just waiting for this point to reach, and that was the point I just broke. Uh, I, I just closed my partial 50%, and here I got my 70 pips roundabout. And I just now I'm risk free trader, second so my trades are running risk free, so I just let my remaining trades run. So I'm just waiting for the target to move back here. So these are the thing. Same case with the uh, <clears throat> Nasdaq. Mm -hmm. I only trade the same case with the Nasdaq. I was just waiting for the breakout scenario. You know, there is a simple chart. I don't uh, put anything extra. It's simple price section, market structure. There is nothing different. If you if you don't know about, about the DXY movement, if you don't know about the fundamentals, if you don't know about the dollars getting stronger, and you are still buying pound, gold, and euro, that's your fault. Okay. Even technicals are allowing you to buy. You just shouldn't have to buy because you are just moving against the trend. Exactly. So that is that is something different yeah, that is if you are learning if you i'm got uh if you got 100 percent skill in the tactic and uh, so that doesn't mean that you can win all the uh, all the trades okay you can still lose you can still lose and because of market <laughs> okay right here uh look at the nasdaq nasdaq i was waiting for that let me show the on the four hour chart get a clear entry right here this was my rejection point, strong rejection point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just uh, hate drawdowns. So I just wait for the perfect entries. I just prefer sniper entries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just uh, take stop losses of about 20 to 50 pips and just follow risk and money management accordingly. Okay. So here I was just waiting for the price to move here. And that was a point I, uh, I took my entry and then Took my entry and took my partials right here mm -hmm. okay and brought my stop loss at the break even mm -hmm. so i'm 100 percent scared now so i'm 100 percent scared now my trade is running in profit as well because i knew that dollar is dipping so every currency pair nasdaq and every gold even moving moving up so i was just sitting back relaxed and just waiting for the market to do its work that's where it moved up and retraced it and just move and hit my tp it was yesterday and right now you can see that it, it's moving down and it's already moving into my boundaries. You're already in a short position. 
What's your average uh, risk to add ratio? Uh, I usually follow a one ratio three mm-hmm. minimum at minimum level. But uh, sometimes, sometimes when the market condition isn't in favorable, I just tend to close my trade with one ratio one because of the certain news impacts. Yeah. Okay, because of certain news impacts because you have seen about the CPI, what CPI did and what NFP did. Okay, so you don't know, uh, you don't know what market would do. So yeah. you just, I just close uh, sometimes in profit, but mm-hmm. sometimes when the market uh, isn't in my favor, so I just don't wait for the stop loss to hit. When I realize that market isn't moving in my favor and this trend is changed, so I just close my trade. Okay, so I usually follow from one ratio to three to one ratio ten. That depends. All right. So uh, do you have any tips for traders who are trading uh, during the news? Because uh, uh, as you can see that recently during the CPI news and other news releases, we can see that the liquidity is getting swiped in, in both exactly. the, the buy side and the sell side. And then the market is giving you some, some sort of idea about the, where should the price go next. So uh, uh, what are the tips? Uh, what are the tips from your end to identify the moves previously based on the XY? If you know about the fundamentals, you have read about the previous uh, reports about those uh, CPI reports. You have known that CPI report came uh, positive uh, about 8.5 percent plus. It was after 40 years. Okay, mm-hmm. it's, it broke the 40 years record. Okay, mm-hmm. so you never know what will happen. Okay, because due to the certain inflation, due to the certain uh, COVID cases, rising COVID cases, and employment rate, doctor slim, all these factors, all these factors mostly triggers uh, volatility in the market. Okay, so for me, you never know what will happen in the market. How much volatility you can expect from the market? Okay, so I most of the time, most of the time, I usually sit back when there comes a the news. Okay, mm-hmm. I just just sit back and see the reaction. What will market do? Okay, if the market, you don't know that, uh, let me tell you one thing I've uh, analyzed during this time period that market will follow the trend. Okay, if the moves, uh, if the moves came negative, but still eventually it will follow the trend. But just for that time period, you just have to sit back and relax and wait for the confirmation. Okay, you wait for the right entry. If you are a keen trader, if you are a perfect trader and you know that you don't know that you are 100% right, then you can enter the trade while uh, news. Okay, when news comes, you can enter the trade. But what happens because you don't know that the NFP and CPI report, these kind of reports moves in the both direction. Okay, so you uh, you will <clears throat> incur uh, uh, slippage as well. Okay, so just have to just why don't you just wait for the market because trading is all about patience. Okay, if you are not patient enough, you might not gain enough profit because sometimes you will gain a hundred, two hundred, one thousand, two thousand dollar within a day, but eventually you will end up losing everything. Up. So just you have to sit back until unless you are a hundred percent sure. That's absolutely. Has your psychology ever got affected uh, due to your trading plan? Oh uh, man, that's just something tricky because uh, psychology has always, always affected. Okay, uh, due to external factors, you can't remain 100% emotionally, physically, and mentally stable. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes I know that uh, I started my signal service. I have so, so many, I've known so many people you usually, usually follow me. So I do know that they are totally dependent on me. Okay, I'm just teaching them, I'm just coaching them as well. So I'm sharing my analysis and they are trading based on those analysis as well. So I just have to remain calm all the time because whenever I know that I'm not emotionally stable due to some certain factors, then I just sit back and relax. I don't trade. Yeah, because I know that my decision will impact others as well. Because I will lose, I will lose as well, and they will lose as well. Okay. If you are, if you are in a losing streak, then eventually you will keep on remaining in the losing streak. Exactly. Okay. But after making, for me, after taking one to two losses, I'm done for the day. All right. So uh, this is uh, this is basically what your risk management plans look like. Am I correct? Uh, taking one to three trades per day and uh, just uh, just keeping the trade if you are on a losing streak but what are the other things you follow to manage your risks properly 
there's nothing specific i follow uh, to manage my risk properly uh, mm-hmm. i just uh, take my uh, risk properly because i have certain targets okay i'm not going to risk one, more than 1% okay sometimes but 1.2% that's enough but that depends on the account size as well okay mm-hmm. i don't uh, risk further okay sometimes uh, i just uh, usually i have a whiteboard okay i write it down everything on it i just write all my reports all my news which will uh, affect the market as well okay mm-hmm. if i am paying gold i will write the usc news and this and that okay so i uh, there i will write my rules as well okay if you are <clears throat> in a losing street and you are done for the day okay if you are making a profit and you have reached your target then you are done for the day it doesn't matter how many how many more opportunities you will see you just don't need to trade just go man go outside live a life that's what i believe exactly that's perfect so so we have already reached the, the conclusion of this video so do you have anything to say to our traders about why they should run fund next yeah sure why not uh I believe Funnex would be uh, would be would be the most profitable firm in the future near future because of so many factors you have got the 15% bonus from that because we are uh, traded know that from the demo phase from the phase 1 to phase 2 we do know that we struggle a lot okay and if we are not rewarded from the effort we have made then there's no benefit okay so you guys are just taking that into consideration and that's 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 really amazing okay so i just uh, like you guys to uh, people tell uh, people that you guys need to just join them because of the not only because of 15% demo profit but also about your dedicated support okay you have got the dedicated account manager okay whenever you have any query whenever you have got any confusion you have got any issue you can ask your manager okay he will sort everything out okay i have ceased myself so many issues and those were uh, those were uh, solved by a manager instantly okay these are the things which other firms lack like. okay customer services is a main thing if your customer is not satisfied then how can you progress in the future thank you mr walkers for being with us and it was such a pleasure to interview you today and we wish you all the best and thanks thank you so much thank you from the entire fund the next team thank you thank you so much thank you so much walkers so including the interviews so do you have any thing to say to our uh, to our audience and uh, let's say to our team any any suggestion any feedbacks uh you have done uh, previously well about the 13 second rule yeah. i'm old, i'm 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 really happy about that you guys just listen to the community as well okay you guys just need to improve uh, because you just need to interact with the community okay uh, you just need you guys just need to keep on interacting with the community you guys just need to listen to what the people are saying okay yeah. that doesn't mean that you get to have to do uh, what they are saying but you just <clears throat> need to do that and you just need to do uh, to just start concluding based on those uh, those suggestion those feedbacks okay i've seen so many firms so many people uh, so many companies developing by listening to their customer by listening to the feedback suggestions all right thank you man thanks i think uh, we're going to conclude the interview right now and see you on the discord server thank you so much thank you so much allah hafiz allah hafiz thank you all for watching see you all in the next episode Till then, stay safe and take care.